Here's a little inverse trig review before the community quiz. So looking at um, inverse trig functions, when I have um, my um, points for my sine function, um, we restrict those um, from negative pi over two to pi over two to make it a, to make a, uh, sine of x monotonistic so that it's one to one so that it's inverse is a function and then we interchange those points arriving here so at negative pi over two which is our farthest left on sine we result in negative one we know that on the unit circle you know at, at negative pi over two we're right down here so Switching the points. Um, so they've all been interchanged. The key is restricting the domain for sine. So when I plug into the sine function, when I plug in the sine of an angle, let's just say negative pi over 4, I'm going to get a side ratio, the lengths of sides divided, um, on the unit circle, our, our y height divided by the length of our radius, which is going to be a number between negative one and one, always, never above one. And so I plug in a, I plug in an angle and I get out the side ratio. So let's see, the sine of negative pi over four would be right there, which is our negative one over square root two, which is our you know ne negative point seven oh seven, our square root two over two, however you like to memorize it, um, based on our activities in the earlier in the year. Now the inverse sign, that's asking, okay, when I plug, I'm asking for the inverse relationship. So my inputs to the inverse relationship, my inputs here that I'm highlighting, let's see if I can highlight those, my inverses here that I'm highlighting, My inverse is my inputs to the inverse function, which I'm highlighting, are the angles. So my inputs are the y over r from my um, from its inverse. So the input is now the the side ratio, and the output is which angle calls that. So when I now do, oh, let's see. I wonder. I wonder whose angle has a negative one over square root two. Whose whose sine relationship has a negative point seven oh seven? We're like, oh, I know that one. That's at negative pi over four. So we're going to draw our answers from that side of the unit circle. But I warn you, negative pi over four could also be considered seven pi over four. This location in space is negative pi over 4. It is also 7 pi over 4. However, it doesn't fall within that restricted domain, so that isn't allowed. And the same thing is true for all of the other trig functions. So tangent, it also has a restricted domain from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. But if you notice... The parentheses right there. The endpoints aren't included, obviously, because we have an asymptote at those points. So going through a little bit faster, you already know all of your points. At negative pi over 2, uh, tangent is y over x. x is 0 at negative pi over 2, so that causes a negative 1 over 0 in an undefined situation, and we have an asymptote. We've got all of our points. We mark them up. This is an angle. This is the ratio of sides. Side ratio, the length divided, the length of my y divided by the length of my x. That's my side ratio. In my On my inverse function, Everything's been interchanged. The side ratio output now becomes 
the input to my tangent inverse function, and the answer I get out is the angle. Basically, when I want to know the angle, I have to use the inverse relationship. So all of those are true. Now, we've used this in graphing, and, and that will be in a different video, but, but my when my y value is negative pi over 2, let's do a quick sketch over here. It's going to be in another video. But when my y value is negative pi over 2, I have an asymptote. And then slide my graph in like that. Right. That's another video, but but at the points when I input negative one, so I'm saying when is my y divided by my x equal to negative one? Well, that must be on the unit circle when the x and the y have exactly the same length, except one of them is positive and one of them's negative, and that would be at negative pi over four. So my answer to when the side relationship is negative one. So when I plug in negative one there, I say, oh, that happens at negative pi over four. Same thing was true with cosine. However, we've decided to make this monotonistic. We're gonna take only our values from the top half of the circle. Basically, it's much easier to see on the graph because we didn't take, if I, if I travel from zero to pi on the graph of cosine, it's now monotonistic and one to one, and therefore passes all of the values, um, all of the inverse properties, staying monotonistic and one to one. All right, so now all of those values are um, in, in my original cosine function. Inputs are angle outputs are side ratios on the inverse inputs are side ratios outputs are angles um, noted over here all of those key points so now let's just move on and do some examples remember that the question's always going to be what angle within the restricted values has a side ratio of given whatever so now um, sine inverse of one half, sine inverse of one half, um, that was my family coming in, sine inverse of one half, what angle within the restricted values has a side ratio of one half, we can think about that, um, I personally always just think the unit circle, I know my y value is one half right there at pi over six, so my answer to this would be pi over six. That falls within the restricted output values um, of negative pi over two to pi over two. Remember, I'm only allowed to give my values for sine from negative pi over two to pi over two. Now, when we have arc cosine of cosine of negative pi over two, we've got a function inside a function. So let's just go ahead and simplify on the inside first. So let's rewrite this as arc cos of cosine of negative pi over 2. I say to myself, what is my cosine value at negative pi over 2? Ah, that's 0. Therefore, the question is, arc cos, back up here, what angle within the restricted values has a side ratio of 0? So cosine is restricted from 0 to pi. When is cosine zero in that domain? At positive pi over two. One more example. Actually, two more examples. One more here. Um, a little more going on. We've got a function inside a function inside a function. So let's just simplify always from the inside out. So let's ask the question, um, When is what is the side ratio of cosine at negative pi over three? So let's see bring everything along for the ride here, answer my question there. What is cosine at negative pi over 3 down there? Ah, oh, that's my um, 1 half. Then I have the question, ah, oh, what angle has a sine relationship 
of one half. That's this question here. So then, using the same unit circle over here, when does sine equal one half? Right there in quadrant one, pi over six. Now I have a simple answer. What is the tangent of pi over six? One over square root three. Some of us call that square root three over three. Um, one more type of problem to finish up and then we'll be done. We have um, the sine of tangent inverse of four thirds. So we haven't had you memorize that, but we have this simple question of, we're saying, okay, I want to know a sine of an angle. This right here, the answer to this is an angle. The sine of an angle tangent inverse. Well, let's see, what does that mean? Well, that means we've got this relationship. Tangent is opposite, so that's four, over adjacent, which is three. That means this is my angle here. That's the angle I'm looking for. I don't know what it is. You don't know what it is. But what we do know, it's in a triangle, a right triangle. So this situation, using Pythagoras' theorem, must be a 5. Therefore, the sine relationship, which is opposite over hypotenuse, sine of this angle we don't know, is an opposite over hypotenuse relationship. The answer to this problem is 4 fifths. Hope that helps you.